All right, we'll go ahead and start. It's it's at 11 o'clock, so we're going to try to keep this to an hour. Um, so I know everyone has schoolwork and, and appointments and things that we need to get done on this gorgeous day in April. So thank you guys for all being here. My name is Katie McMullen. I am Director of Community Relations um, at the Royals. I'll introduce you to everyone here in a second, um, but you'll hear a lot from myself and then Rachel Blackman is also in our department, and she's going to be our producer today and make sure that all the questions that you ask we can get answers to. So how this will kind of work, I know you can see all of our panelists up on the screen. Everybody can wave. Then there's a group um, of it looks like 49 of you that are online right now as attendees. So we cannot see you, we can't hear you, but there's a cool little function down at the bottom called Q and A on your screen. If you were on a computer or a tablet, you can go ahead and click that button and then you can ask the panelists questions. That's what Rachel will be going through and sorting through um, for you. If you have a specific question for a specific one of our panelists, go ahead and add their name in there. So then Rachel can specifically call that person out um, with the understanding that question is specifically for them. When you see the questions that will pop up in your, in your screen on that little um, window that will pop up, if there's a specific question that you like or you want to make sure it gets to the top that you really want to know, go ahead and click the little thumbs up button and then that will send it to the top of the question list. We'll try to get through as many questions as we can while keeping on a schedule as well. So that's kind of how everything will work. Um, I want to explain to you the process of why we're doing this. So this is in honor of Jackie Robinson Day, which is a week from now. Jackie Robinson Day is celebrated every April 15th with all Major League Baseball clubs. So you may or may not know a lot about Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson um, had a very unconventional path to baseball. Phenomenal player, phenomenal guy, went through a lot to get to play baseball. I want everyone to understand, and part of the reason why we do this, if you were with us last year or you're new to this program this year, we all have unconventional ways to get to baseball. So I have put together this panel group from all different departments throughout the stadium of people who have different jobs, different ways that they got to baseball, besides just being a player. We all know that you can play baseball, you can make the baseball team, you can do that but we all work in Major League Baseball and we had different ways to get there. So I'm excited to share all of their stories with you. So I'll go ahead and go down and introduce everyone. So panelists, when I introduce you, I'll go ahead and unmute you or if you wanna unmute yourself and then you can describe a little bit more in depth about your title in the Royals and then a little maybe two sentences on what you specifically do for the Royals. So we're going to go ahead and start with Ed Chu. Ed Chu works in our ticket office and ticket operations. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Ed, and I am the ticket operations manager here with the Royals. This is my fourth year now, and I'm mainly in charge of managing the day-to-day -day operations with the box office, as well as handling the different ticket requests that come in throughout various departments, as well as to the general public. Awesome. Thank you, Ed. I'm going to introduce Tori Boykins. She works in creative services and graphic design. Hey everybody, my name is Tori, a graphic designer for the Royals. Royals. I've been with the Royals for a little over a year now. Um, we are a department of about three individuals. We um, do print and digital design work um, and kind of serve as an in-house creative agency for the Royals organization. Tori made these really cool backgrounds yesterday that you see um, with the Club 42 logo. So thank you, Tori. Those are really cool. They look great. I'm going to introduce Jonathan Rosa now. He works for Baseball Operations and the Urban Youth Academy. Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Jonathan Rosa, and um, like Katie said, I work um, in, in baseball operations over at the Urban Youth Academy, which hopefully for, for all of you guys on this uh, call, you're all, all pretty familiar with it. But the, those of you who aren't, it's a um, baseball and softball facility located 18th and Vine, um, centered around the urban core. So we do a lot of cams and clinics um, for kids, uh, boys and girls ages 6 to 18 all the way up through high school. Awesome. It's a beautiful facility. If you haven't checked it out, please, please go check it out. Um, next is Serena White. She works in our event operations and guest experience department. 
Hi, yes, my name is Serena. I am the guest experience specialist uh, for the Royals. Um, this would be my second season now. Um, and basically I just uh, do most of the communication with fans um, as far as special requests go, um, lost and found, any um, game day um, issues or requests or anything of that nature. Serena does an awesome job helping all of us out. Make sure your game day experience is, is awesome. Next, I want to introduce Ashley. Ashley is in our business operations and authentics department. Yeah, hi, Katie. Hi, everyone. Uh, my title is the manager of authentic merchandise sales. Long story short, basically what I do is I sell gear from the clubhouse in the locker room. Uh, it's important to the company because otherwise, if we didn't try to sell those things, they would be considered sunk costs for the company. And so just trying to pull in a little bit of revenue um, where we can. Awesome. You guys can check out her store online or at the stadium. They have some pretty cool game stuff as well. So next I'm going to introduce um, Lewis. He works on our major league medical staff and training department. Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Luis Perez. Uh, I am the assistant strength and conditioning uh, coach in the major leagues. Uh, there's two of us up there, and I also oversee the training for our Latin America uh, department that includes the, all the kids in the minor leagues and, and the Dominican Republic, our academy. He keeps the guys safe and strong, so that's awesome and keeps them stretched out and ready to go. Next, I'm going to introduce Jenny. Jenny works in our baseball operations department. Hi, I'm Jenny. Um, I'm a software developer with baseball operations. Um, it, I work in the uh, research and development team. It's myself and two other software developers, um, and I'm in my second season. And I typically work on importing data that we may receive from various inputs and also building tools that our baseball operations group may need to use. Very, very important part of baseball. And last but certainly not least, we have Mandy Marks. She works in our marketing and business development and video department. Yes, hi, I'm Mandy here. Um, I am the manager of content. We do all video that you see that goes out on our social media and digital platforms. So our goal is just to tell the story of the players, be the voice of the team when they're not on the field and during in-game as well. I'm um, just connecting fans in any way possible and trying to make awesome video content. So as you guys can see, we have a very diverse group of um, panelists that are here today. So make sure to keep um, having those questions come in. Again, if you are on a phone or excuse me, a computer or a tablet, go ahead and click that Q&A button down at the bottom. If you have a specific question for someone, um, make sure that you add their name in it as well. You should be able to see them on your screen who's who. Um, we'll go through a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and jump into some questions before we send it over to Rachel. So Tori, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you up first. What drove you to professional sports? I know you've worked in other sports as well. So if you want to talk a little bit about that and then what drove you to specifically come to professional sports? Um, I think just playing sports my, my whole life. I've played basketball, done boxing. I just knew I wanted to do something um, that was that was fun and also that could you know take me somewhere in my career. Um, I started off um, actually with my own company. Uh, I did that for six years and then I decided I wanted to get into graphic design because that's not initially what I did. Um, so I went back to school, got a degree in design. Um, I didn't know that you could actually, uh, that teams had in-house designers. So once I figured that out, I kind of just started doing my own projects on the side um, just for fun and build my portfolio up. Um, and then I landed a job um, working as an assistant designer for one year with the Chiefs. And when I saw the Royals were hiring for a full-time designer, I just knew that I wanted to stay in Kansas City. So um, that's kind of how I, I got there. Yeah, and do you want to tell everybody where you're originally from and where you went to school? Sure, um, I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio, um, and I went to school at Purdue University. And my degree is actually in interior design, but I didn't end up um, practicing design. I kind of did my own thing with that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's one thing we want to reiterate in this panel is it's not necessarily the degree you get. It's just the drive of what position that you you want to be in and, and going after that goal of, of what specifically you enjoy and want to do. Awesome. Thank you, Tori. Um, Jenny, we're going to hit you this time. What are what are the specific experiences that you've previously had that led you to this position? Um. I started off, after I graduated from college, I started off working in software development in um, a completely different industry, but baseball was always a passion of mine. I grew up watching baseball, playing a lot of wiffle ball, 
eventually started playing softball and I played softball in college. So it was uh, baseball and softball have always been a big passion of mine. Um, so as I had been working in that other industry, while I enjoyed it, I, I wanted to work towards something that was really special to me. So I started looking for opportunities and I got very fortunate because I'm a hometown kid. So the Royals are my hometown team and I got an opportunity to, to come in and work for them. And it, it's been a great experience. Yeah, that's cool. That's, you know, I think something we all dream about, you know, we all have a passion for baseball and that, that led us here as well. That's awesome. All right, Lewis, what was a significant roadblock or hurdle that you had to overcome to be able to come to this position? Uh, it was a, a, a long path for me. I'm originally from Venezuela, so I grew up playing baseball like many Latin kids. Uh, my goal was to be in the major leagues and, and play professionally. I was really close to signing uh, when my parents uh, essentially signed the papers for me to come to the United States on our scholarship, um, I still pursue the fact that I wanted to play in the major leagues here. And I, all my four years of college, I talked to a ton, tons of scouts and it was my goal to get there. But at the end, it didn't work out. And uh, parallel to that, I was getting my degree and I was going to school and I found my passion in strength and conditioning. So I believe one door open another one and led to another one and and here i am it's been a long time this is my 11th year with the team so it's been uh, it's been fun yeah how old were you when you came to the united states i was 17 when i came to the united states so it's been it's been a while it was fun it was uh, i was dropped in the middle of the u.s uh, barely spoke any english uh, Ended up in Nebraska. That was my first stop uh, at a junior college. Uh, three feet of snow on the ground. And <laughs> I didn't know you were supposed to play baseball like that. But uh, it, it, it was good. I had a lot of people that pushed me. And, and the college and all the coaches there were, were extremely help, helpful. I, uh, I found a host family. They, I consider my mom and dad still to this day. Um, and uh, it, was, it was really good. Then I got to transfer uh, and go play baseball in uh, central Missouri, which is close to Kansas City. And it was a really good team. We went to World Series and everything. So I had a lot of fun playing baseball and found my passion with strength and conditioning. And uh, it's just, it just led to the Royals. Uh, somehow um, I reached out to a lot of people. Uh, they happened to be open and have a job available down in Arizona. So I started in Arizona and kind of worked my way through it. Yeah, that's incredible. I think all of us agree there's there's always some one person in your life that you can kind of look to as a mentor and, and are willing to help you and, and willing to do stuff for you. So that's incredible. Yeah, sorry about the snow in Nebraska. Um, <laughs> it's okay. um, we're going to go ahead and open up to one of your questions that you guys have been sending in. So Rachel, do you have a question for anyone? I do. We have a question for Tori. Um, can you name a few things that you design and then what you do with your designs? Yeah, sure. Um, so a lot of, so I've done a, a, quite a few things. Um, we work hand in hand with the digital team to do some social media graphics, um, different, um, um, we do a few uh, motion things as well. Um, but um, any type of promotional uh, graphics that they need, um, we've designed anything from uh, handbooks that go around to internal staff in the stadium to stop signage in the stadium as well. Was the second part of the question <laughs> um just what you I you answered it what what things you design and then what you do with them so i think you yeah. you got it thank you yeah if you guys notice a lot of the stuff that you'll see in the stadium um tori's had a had a touch on it so it's it's really cool to be able to see all of the things that that tori's done all right serena what is something that inspires you inspires well i think most of the time people will probably say like family or money or you know whatever mentor they might have had uh you know in the past it might have got them to somewhere but for me i think it's more so of an internal just drive to win and just to be the best at what i do um so i think i just uh i pride myself a lot in just work ethic um and so i know that if i don't put forth a certain effort or if i don't give my best at something i'm just not pleased with myself uh, so it's just a matter of me wanting to go home satisfied with my day. So I think that's my biggest inspiration is just wanting to be proud of myself. That's awesome. That's a great, great advice. Mm -hmm. 
All right, Rachel, do we have another question from our board? We do. Um, we have a question for Ashley. Um, she, um, the question for Ashley is, what steps did you take to get where you are now? I think that uh, early on, I just really knew the uh, idea and the concept of goal setting. So I knew in high school that I, I enjoyed retail and I wanted to pursue that. And so I got, um, I uh, applied for a few jobs in the retail spectrum and um, worked through there. And then I was fortunate enough to receive an internship for the season of 2016. And uh, after that, it just seems that um, I've worked up in my department to become the manager of um, Authentic. So I think that um, most of it was early on goal setting and uh, and then once, and really find the direction of where you wanna continue going and after you find that direction is to really just um, set your mind to it and know and uh, grow in that role overall. So um, uh, yeah, I think the, the biggest part for me was just knowing what I wanted to do and being able to figure that out early on. Rachel, do we have another question ready? We do. Um, this one is for Jonathan. Um, we would like to know why did you decide to work with the Royals and the Urban Youth Academy? Yeah, um, great question. Um, so there's no real short way to answer this, so I'll kind of give a, a little bit longer answer. But um, for those of you who don't know me or can't see me, I... Um, have a condition called cerebral palsy. So I walk with a walker. Um, I've, I've never been able to walk. And I say that because my path towards to baseball, um, uh, you know, I've never played competitively. Um, I, I've never played any competitive sport, but I've been around baseball my whole life. Um, baseball's always been my biggest passion. Um, and, you know, as I got going through school, originally I, I wanted to um, be a sports writer. Because in my mind, I, I wanted to figure out how can I make the biggest impact in, in the game, knowing that I'm ne never going to be able to play the game. And for me at the time, that was sports writing. So I went to school, um, studied journalism, graduated with a journalism degree. Um, and then I also, when I was in college, I worked with the KU baseball team, um, the University of Kansas baseball team as a, as a um, student manager for four years. So it was there that really... I began to realize, you know, this is where I want to be. I want to be in sports and uh, baseball. And um, I just got very fortunate, you know, that uh, I was in the right place at the right time and, and made the right connections that wanted me there with the Royals. So um, I was very fortunate to wind up where I am. I'm, I'm local. I've been in Kansas City most of my life. And, and uh, you know, to wind up where I am, especially now at the Urban Youth Academy, to be able to do some really really cool things that was what drew me what drew me to the to the opportunity was the ability to make an impact in the game and to you know introduce the game to maybe a father or son mother mother or daughter who who may have never played before or had the the funds or the space to be able to do so so um yeah that's that's my story thank you jonathan so a question, um, I'll go ahead and grab one live and I'll ask Ed this question. So what are some benefits of working for a major league team? Um, I think it's a lot of the people that we work with. Like, as you said earlier, Katie, like we all have different backgrounds. It's interesting to see how everyone got here and the path that they took. And it's always nice, obviously, to do well and then tell people like, hey, you work for the Royals or you work for a professional sports organization and they all, all look at you and be like, oh, wow, that's so cool and everything. And then we don't realize it's, it is actually a lot of hard work, but it's something that where I didn't want necessarily a job where I just go in, you know, do my work and then go home. I want to get up early in the morning, be excited to go into work because it doesn't feel like an actual job. It just feels like I'm having fun um, while doing work and being around people that have similar interests to me, being around people that love sports, um, and just be able to interact with everybody because we all have different backgrounds and we all came from different places. So it's just a very cool mixture of a different group of people. 
Yeah, and I'll give um, our attendees a little bit of a background. So we, everybody that's on the panel today, we do work year round. So we still drive to the stadium when it's snowy and gross outside. Um, but the six months that the season is in, um, it is pretty intense. It can get um, very long hours, very long days, very long, but, but it is when you're driving into the stadium, into the parking lot, and you just see, you know, kind of the, the grandiosity of it all, it, it does make it pretty cool. And that's um, definitely makes it a little bit easier to go to work every day for sure. Thanks, Ed. Um, Mandy, I'll ask the same question to you. What are some benefits for you for working in Major League Baseball? Um, I, my passion has always been sports. I majored in sports broadcasting. Um, I wanted to be on air, but I learned quickly I was not very good at that. So um, just being able to go to work every day, watch baseball. Um, I joked after my first like week of a job when I was younger that I couldn't believe they paid me to do what I do. And my dad told me never to tell anyone that. Um, but it's just being able to create every day with people. I get to work with every single department in our in the Royals organization, which I really enjoy. I think building those relationships um, as well as just the feeling um, I've always wanted to work for a baseball team. So this is my second year. I worked in television before that, but being able to just walk up and like you said, drive up to Kauffman Stadium every day. It's, it's a dream come true. And it's, um, I'm so happy I found something that I love to do. Yeah. And then do you want to tell them kind of your background of where you came before you came to the Royals? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm from San Francisco. I started out there. Um, I worked for NBC Sports for about eight years. Um, I started as a baseball highlight editor. So I worked at night. I was cutting highlights, so really watching baseball every night. Um, and then I moved to New York City. So I switched coasts, kept working at NBC Sports. And then I went on to Discovery Channel. Um, and that's when I, when you start doing something that you don't love, you kind of learn how, much, how special it is to do a job that you do love. So I wanted to get back into sports. Um, and that was what brought me to Kansas City. I had never been to Missouri before, but um, I think just you have to take a risk sometimes. And that's just being flexible and being able to follow your dreams um, when it's possible. Um, you just got to kind of jump for it. And it's worked out so far. Yeah, we're very lucky to have you. Rachel, are there any other questions? Yes, we have a lot of great questions coming in here. So thank you guys. Um, we can have a question for Jennifer. Um, the question is, if you're interested in a career in sports, what would you recommend someone do to prepare yourself for the future position? Um, I say learn as much about it as you can, because as we've mentioned on this call, it, you know, it can be a time consuming, we can work a lot of hours, but you want to make sure you're really passionate about it. And you want to you know, you want to be involved and learn as much as you can, read about it, watch about it. Um, I always try to keep up on just information being put out around the game, um, around different analytics or, or things like that. So I think just kind of dive head first into it and learn as much as you can. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and we have another question. Um, we'll go ahead and ask this one to Tori. Um, the question is, do you like your job and were you nervous when you started? Um, I love my job. I think it's fun to come to um, Kaufman every day and just um, create for baseball. Um, and um, yeah, so what was the second part of that question? Uh, were you nervous when you first started your job? Um, um, so when I first started, uh, I was a little nervous, but I think because I noticed how great of a team we had around us um, from the marketing team to the digital team, um, I think that kind of calmed my nerves a little bit. There's always a, a little bit of an adjustment curve when you're starting anywhere new, um, but working with great people but every day really helps that. Cool, great. Um, and we have another question. Um, this one is um, for Ed. Um, what is the most challenging part about working with the Royals? Uh, I would say for me, um, in the ticketing department, as I don't know if some of you guys may be familiar, but we are transitioning more towards digital tickets and mobile tickets where not a lot of people, unfortunately, right now um, are 100% mastered it or anything. So it's a lot, a lot of kind of the things that I do is just to educate as many of our fans as well as our internal staff on kind of benefits of mobile ticketing, how easy it is for everyone to use. Uh, Occasionally during game days, if someone, you know, they have, they got the ticket that's on their phone, they're not sure how to pull it up, they get to the gate, and obviously they kind of get turned away at first, but 
so it's up to me to kind and then they get upset and then they come to the ticket office and unfortunately we have a few customers that are a little bit tougher to deal with i'd say so we i try to do my best to you know kind of put up a brave face in front of everybody tell them keep my calm and let them know that hey this is how you're supposed to do this um so it's up to me to kind of provide guides for everybody and communicating so that it makes people more aware of you know how to pull up a ticket and just kind of show how benefited is the, how easy it is so that if you ever let's say you forget your ticket at home you can actually pull it up on your phone as well and just how um of an easy transition that will be great thank you so much um so we have um, a question for um, Jenny again. Um, what did you study in school and how is a developer utilized in baseball? So I went to Benedictine College and I was a math major. And fortunately for me, as part of that, um, you have to take some software development courses. So you take Java and some other things. So um, I really wasn't actually interested in software development initially and then got into it my senior year and was like, oh, this is awesome, you know. Um, so I started doing that, and um, if you think about all of the data that's coming out from baseball, I mean, baseball is so stats heavy. There's so much data that we pull in and information that we, we get today. So um, if we can take that data and make it a presentable format so that you can look at it and, it and it's easy to take in and read or understand for someone in baseball operations, then we can make their lives easier and help them make decisions going forward. So. Um, developers can be utilized in many different ways. That's just one example, but um, that's a lot of what we do today. That's awesome. I, I really think Jenny is one of the smartest people I know. She's 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 awesome. Lewis, can you go ahead and walk us through what a typical day? I know you're not in Kansas City. You travel with the team, and so you know what does a typical day in season and out of season look like for you? Uh, well, in season, I think is the, the most fun time obviously we're getting to watch baseball every day and, and and be with the team but uh typically i get there uh somewhere uh, mid-morning and start getting ready for the day uh players to start they start strolling in probably around noon uh we have food available there they eat uh, and then we get on to the training uh typically guys train early in the day uh we get lifts done uh uh, geared towards their specific goals and uh, then they go on to their days where we have to do stretches and we have to get them ready. Uh, many of them do manual therapy with the other part of the medical staff, uh, staff and then they head out to hit BP or do their defensive work or, or whatever they have for a skill uh, in regards to their skills. Uh, BP happens and, and then uh, we'll go back in and refuel and get ready to play the game which is the most important part of the day uh during the off season it's a little bit more uh, uh bc we have to track players and make sure everybody's uh staying on track with their progress we always want to start uh, building back up as soon as the season is over so i think that's the most best that's the busiest time of the year for us um, trying to get players to work physically uh, believe it or not these guys sometimes have to get rid of the the baseball and the bat and the, and the glove and start working physically um, because it's it is a really long season as we all know and then uh, we're talking about february until you know november because we want to make it to the world series so it's a it's a very long year and uh, you have to be ready physically to get through it Great, thank you so much. We have another question. Um, this one is for Serena. Um, will you elaborate um, on how that how you envisioned your career versus what the reality of day to day looks like for you? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> um, I think uh, anytime someone looks into like the sport industry or just entertainment in general, it's seen as you know elaborate, you know, um, very you know a very attractive field to work in and sometimes I do have to roll my sleeves up a little bit and, and get sweaty and make things happen last minute and I think that's one of the best parts of what I do is because I don't always know exactly what's going to happen when I walk in that day you know I might have a list of things written down from the day before like I want to get this 
much done. Um, but when I get there that day, I might get something totally different or, you know, I might get in contact with a concern from a, a, a guest or something that I have to work with another department about. Um, so it's just about being prepared and being ready for things to change. Um, I hope I answered the question thoroughly. Um, but yeah, for me, it's, I, I think it's fun that it's not as glamorous as I thought it was going to be. Um, cause I, you know, expect to just come in professionally with a suit on every day and work at a desk and that's not what it is at all. <laughs> some days you might be at the desk, some days you might be out in the hot and, and getting sweaty and, and working hard. So it just depends on the day. Great. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. Um, so this question we have, uh, for Ashley, um, how did you get the exact job that you have now? So for me, um, I actually, when I was a junior in college, we had to, for one of our projects, we had to um, apply for an internship and then present it to the class as if we had gotten the internship. And so I really owe it all to my, one of my college professors because otherwise I wouldn't have been looking for an internship at that time. And so um, long story short, I ended up applying for the internship and I was fortunate enough to get chosen for that. And after that, um, I finished out 2016 with the team as an intern. 2017, I was graduating college and uh, I stayed on part time as I was still traveling back and forth from the University of Central Missouri in Warrensburg. And then after I graduated, um, so an area opened up in my department and I was again fortunate enough to get hired for that after I had applied and then um, and now I'm here. So I think that I think timing is important in sports and uh, the ability to move up in your role. Uh, but that's, that's pretty much how I got here. That's awesome. And then we had another question very similar to Jonathan, kind of same thing. What, what steps did you take to get into the position that you're in now? Was this for me? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so I'll kind of answer that very similarly. Um, for me, it was a, a cool story. Um, my When I was a student manager at KU, we had a player come on a recruiting visit. Uh, his, his name was Tyler, and his dad, his dad was up there with me, and he we were kind of just talking. He said, well, what do you want to do, you know, when you graduate? And I said, well, I, I would love to work in baseball. And he uh, had no idea who I was talking to at the time, but he gave me his card. And uh, his name was Gene Watson. So he is now our senior director of pro scouting. Um, I think he thought maybe I was, uh, you know, a junior or senior at the time. I think I was a sophomore. So I had a few more years to go, but, you know, we, we kept in good contact. And, um, you know, when the time came, I reached out to uh, Mr. Watson and I asked, you know, how can I, um, you know, get the ball rolling? And he said, well, why don't you come to the winter meetings with me? So I went to the winter meetings in Nashville a few years back and they had a job fair and that job fair was, was very stressful. Um, essentially you, uh, print out a bunch of resumes and business cards and, um, you know, you walk around and if there's a job that's posted on a wall that interests you, then you can put your business card and resume in the box and you just wait around all day. And if you get a call, call back um, for an interview on the spot, then, and then, um, you know, they, they see if you're going to be a good fit for the next interview. Um, so <clears throat> long story short, it got to be about the last day there and I, I wasn't having any luck. Um, you know, for me, I knew my resume uh, didn't stick out. Uh, you know, I had my, my four years as a student manager, which was great, but I didn't have really any other experience on my resume. Um, fortunately enough, there was you know, one opportunity with the Royals um, in the in a inside sales position. Um, and that's when I reached out to Gene. And I said, hey, do you know who's hiring me for this position? And he kind of got the ball rolling. Um, long story short, led to an interview at the stadium. And by the time I got through my interviews at Kaufman, you know, they said, Jonathan, um, you know, we think you'd be better suited in something where you can utilize your personality more. And they said, do you mind if we we give your information to the director of guest experience. And I said, no, I, I really appreciate that. Um, you know, and uh, I got hired on actually in Serena's position as the uh, 
uh, guest experience specialist. So that was really cool. And I did that for a few seasons and, um, you know, it came time where, uh, you know, this opportunity came up with the urban youth Academy and baseball operations. And I knew uh, this was a perfect fit for me. I, I, I love, uh, you know, the baseball operations department. I love the people there. I love the culture. And this was the next step for me to, um, you know, progress in my career. Yeah, the Royals organization is extremely lucky to have you, Jonathan. We all we all appreciate your hard work and everything that you do, um, as well as everyone else. But um, this question is is specifically for Mandy. But Tori, I think you can add a little bit to this too. Um, after Mandy's done, it says, "What situations do you face as a social media content creator?" It's personally a career that um, the question that is being asked they want to get into. There's a lot of challenges. Um, I think just on a day to day basis, um, trying to get everything get, like access to players, um, make everything kind of happen. You're getting a lot of you're taking an idea from start to finish. So you really need to be prepared with that. Um, knowing exactly what you're doing. We I think most people on my team are self taught. We, we use YouTube a lot to learn a skill. Um, so just knowing how to do all the little things that are involved. Um, you're not just a, on our team. You're not just a shooter. You're not just an editor. Um, we're content producers. Predators is a word that people use a lot. Uh, we produce, we edit, we shoot, we do everything. Um, you got to sometimes be the light stand. You have to sometimes be a production assistant. Um, we do it all. So I think that's just part of the challenge, but also the exciting part. Um, and that's throughout my career, just trying to learn from every single person um, and kind of bring that all together. Um, and that's what I, and still in my team, um, I know their strengths, um, but with social media, it's it's just 24 seven all the time. So just continuing to be, um, know what the trends are, know what's going on. Um, I think that's probably the challenging part is that it's just nonstop. Um, and also when you, you just, you need to make sure everything's correct because a lot of eyeballs are on what you do. Tori? We work with Tori a lot too in the creative team. So um, she can talk a little bit more about that. No, yeah, all of those things for sure. I think also just being ready for an email that says we need something turned around at the end of the day today. Um, just having that flexibility to do what you need to do to get that done um, for the team uh, is one thing too. And then just even understanding what the social climate is like in general um, on Twitter, Instagram, or any of those things. When is a good time to post things? Did something just happen nationally where it's, you know, insensitive to do this or insensitive to do that, or just kind of keeping on top of um, those types of things as well. Yeah, and I'll add in a little bit. We do not have someone from our social media team on here, um, but they are a department of, of three that handle everything um, that goes on the website as well as Instagram, Facebook, you know, things like that. I know when we've previously had panels, um, I do tend to like to bring someone in from our social media team because I want you guys to understand there's a human side behind that as well. So, you know, when people are making comments that aren't the nicest or um, are a little bit judgmental, there are real people that are posting that and real people that are are absorbing that so just you know kind of a, a side note remember there are people on the other end of it um, so anytime you see video or graphic you'll automatically now think of Mandy and Tori you know because you know them now so just keep that in the back of your mind that you know there, there is a human side to it as well great we have another question this one is for ed um what skill or habit did you develop um in school or in your past jobs that has helped you most in the professional world i would say just be prepared for anything um i, I like the fact that every day is a little bit different so if you're you might have it is still important in my opinion to set like list of goals and a plan but just always be flexible where it's like it doesn't you, you can't always just follow the script 100% because things always tend to deviate. And how you kind of deal with that, in my opinion, is will make you better prepared for it. So uh, when I was in school, I kind of had a list of always things that I needed to accomplish each day, like, like schoolwork, um, if I needed to, like, let's say, outside of work, go work out, stuff like that. But just so some, sometimes some things can take a little bit longer. And obviously, you just got to be prepared and also just be kind of flexible in order to kind of, as I said, move a little bit differently than what you, something you had originally planned to do. Definitely very good advice. Um, Ashley, this one is for you. Um, if you could give advice to a student who wants to study marketing, what would it be? 
I would truly say that in the marketing world, um, that experience really, really, really outweighs the classroom. And so when you are in school, obviously the classroom is very important, but when you are in school, try to get involved in other activities, whether uh, when I was in high school, I was in DECA, which is a marketing organization, or whether it is some kind of campaign that your school is putting on, or maybe a student council uh, in college, whether it is with, with a sports um, department or in Greek life, I think getting involved is the, the biggest thing. And at the end of the day, I think that um, you really want to make your resume stand out. So the more that you can have on there and the more that you can um, fulfill and gear towards marketing and what you want to do, whether that is with sports or maybe it's with fashion or whatnot, you really want to tailor that to what your goal, your end goal is, what your dreams are. And so um, involvement, I can't stress that enough. Involvement is so important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we have about 20 minutes left, so keep the questions coming. These are fantastic. Um, but this is a follow-up to Mandy's question um, earlier. So Mandy, you used the example of using YouTube to be self-taught. How many of the other panelists um, have self-taught themselves um, using YouTube or something similar as, as a good resource? Yeah, I think we can all say that that we kind of we kind of do as well. YouTube's a, a great um, or, or the internet really is has been extremely helpful for finding some information. Not all of it's correct, but you know at least trying to troubleshoot or problem solve um, or spark an idea maybe to lead you to do something. Um, I, I do want to go around real quick, um, and Serena, I'll start with you, and you can answer because I think you had a comment to this. But what is your actual degree in? Um, because a lot of I think a lot of people think that you need to get a sports management or a sports specific degree, and and I don't think that's always the case. Some of us have. So can you tell? Let's go through, and I'll call you out where you're from, because I know half of us are probably from Kansas City and half of us are not. So kind of going back to Mandy's idea of of just taking that leap, you know, that if you want it, go after it and go get it. So where are you from and what did you major in? So Serena, I'll go ahead and start with you. Yeah, so I am Kansas City born and raised, um, so just conveniently here. <laughs> um, but I went to the University of Missouri, and I actually am sport management specific. Uh, so at Mizzou, it is uh, technically labeled as um, park recreation and sport, uh, with an emphasis in sport management, and then I also added a minor in business. Um, but as far as like what you major in versus what you do, um, and I think everybody would probably agree with this, but it, you know, it, you can major in marketing and still they have a very broad aspect as to what you're going to do, whether that's going to be sports, whether that's going to be broadcast or whatever it may be. Um, I don't think it's necessary or I don't think it's required um, by any means, even though I did have a sport management a degree. I don't think it's a requirement. I just think for me, I knew that's what I wanted to do. And I just appreciated um, the classes that I did have at Mizzou because they were very uh, broad, elaborate with um, econ, facilities, um, sales, law, you know, the whole broad aspect of what sport is versus just one direct path of, you know, learning. I think they broaden it out enough where someone could major in sport management and still maybe even pursue a career in economics or finance or, or something of the sort. Um, but yeah, for me, I was I born and raised in Kansas City, but the reason I came back was because I had an internship with sporting. Um, so um, it was three weeks before the end of my lease, I had gotten the call <laughs> about receiving my internship with sporting. And at the time I was looking for apartments in Columbia because I didn't have anything set up. So I uh, ended up getting that internship and that's what moved me back to Kansas City. Um, and then uh, a little while after that, I then came over to the Royals. So for me, it just all kind of happened in a cycle. <laughs> a whirlwind. <laughs> Ed, where did you go to school and where are you from? Um, I was actually born in Taiwan and I moved to Chicago when I was around five years old. So grew up in a suburb outside of Chicago called Naperville. And I went to school in Bowling Green State University in Ohio. And I, like Serena, I majored in sport management. And there they had, uh, it was, they fall, it fell under their education department. So I had to, so I technically have a Bachelor of Science in Education with an emphasis on sport management, as well as a minor in marketing. And similar to kind of what Serena was saying, I like the fact, I 
wanted to work in sports, but I didn't necessarily know what department I wanted to work in. So what I liked there was it kind of gave, as Serena was saying, a broad kind of wide range of classes where I didn't necessarily know, but then it gave me a little bit of an introduction into what each sort of uh, department's not the right word, but each little bit of information on kind of what the different aspects of business-wise, like with econ, with either with like facility management or just kind of selling and things like that. So it was there where I kind of determined where it's like, hey, this is, I chose a field that I wanted to go into, but when I'm going in, I didn't know. So I would say it's it's not necessarily a requirement to work to have a degree in sport management. As we all all of us have different backgrounds where it's like we all came from a different place and each one of us each sport program basically we all have different degrees and it all kind of molds it and blends it into one. So it's not just one specific degree in my opinion. Uh, absolutely. Tori, can you remind us again? I know you had mentioned it earlier, um, what your degree's in and, and where you're from. Yeah, from Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I have a degree from Purdue University in interior design, um, which was a really fun major. I think it was maybe my junior year that I kind of realized I didn't want to practice interior design um, in the real world. I had been doing a lot of different flyers for different organizations on campus. Um, I'm part of a sorority, so I had kind of started um, doing painting like woodwork and things like that. And I kind of got the entre entrepreneurial bug. And so after college, I immediately started my own company, which I did for six years. Um, and then I kind of took it another step and kind of put that on hold a little bit and got into graphic design specifically. And I did use a lot of those resources like YouTube and um, different things like lynda.com to kind of sharpen my design skills to the point where I could actually get a job doing design. So um, I didn't really take a straight route to um, getting into the design industry. And then when I came into the industry, um, I was taking some of the kind of starter jobs like internships and um, associate positions. Um, and I'd been out of college for maybe like seven years at that point. So I kind of had to restart my career a little bit, but it was worth it. I feel like I've ended up in a place that I really wanted to be. So sometimes you just have to make that sacrifice um, for something that you're really passionate about. Yeah, that's great. I think um, being passionate about anything is, is what's going to lead you to your purpose. And that's awesome. And Mandy, can you remind us again where you're from and, and kind of your degree path? Yes, I'm from uh, the Bay Area, San Francisco, California. I majored in journalism at the University of Colorado with an emphasis in sports broadcasting. I went there because I wanted to go snowboarding all the time. Um, that's kind of how I picked where I was going. Um, I worked for the football team. I did play-by-play -play in color for the football um, while I was there. And then I also DJed for the radio station. So I was really debating between music and being um, on air as a sports broadcaster, which like I said before, I wasn't very, very good at it. So I quickly learned the behind the scenes of video production and everything that kind of went along with that. Um, and I really fell in love with that aspect of it. Um, and then kind of took it from there. And um, I worked like in baseball. My first job, I've actually um, had a two roadblocks where I was laid off from jobs. Um, our whole team was um, laid off. So at first uh, at Fox Sports Rocky Mountain, right when I started my career, um, so that was kind of hard uh, right away, uh, but kind of bounced back from that. And then again, after eight years with NBC Sports, um, they made some changes. So kind of re-figuring out what I wanted to do at that point, um, but that's that's where it started. That's awesome. Jenny, go ahead and fill us in where you're from. And you said Kansas City, so we know that, but kind of your degree path. Um, yes, I'm from Kansas City. I went to Benedictine College and I majored in math and then I got a minor in Spanish. Um, and then right out the gate, I was starting to apply to different jobs. But as I mentioned, I had to do some software um, development in my senior year. And so I had included that as part of my resume and was fortunate, fortunate enough to start working as an associate level developer um, for a, a company in the financial industry. And I just kind of went with it at that point and really, really enjoyed it and did that for 10 years with that company before coming to the Royals. That's awesome. And I think everyone can agree. Um, learning a second language is, is huge, especially in professional sports. You do have a lot of um, a mixed group of people that are coming together. So that's always a benefit if you ever want to get into sports. That'll just take your resume a little bit further, you know, to that next level. Jonathan, can you remind us again? I know you had mentioned a little bit before. 
Yeah, so I um, I was born in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, spent a couple years there and then bounced to, I went to Mexico City, um, lived in Mexico for a couple years, um, made my way to Kansas and then moved to Florida for a couple years in there. But for the most part, I've lived most of my life in Kansas. Um, I, I developed a passion for writing when I was in high school. So I, I wrote for the school newspaper at the time. And then um, that's what I knew what I wanted to do when I went to college. So I majored in journalism. I actually wrote for the newspaper at KU for a, a brief time. Um, while that was going on, uh, I was also, like I mentioned earlier, getting involved with the baseball team at KU as a student manager. So, um, you know, that's kind of where my heart went, um, you know, but even though I don't, I kind of deviated from the writing path, I think that's the most important skill you can have really in any profession is to be able to write well, um, you know, and that, that really shows there's nothing that sticks out more than, you know, if you're reading a resume or, or really any kind of document where somebody has typos or spelling errors and, um, you know, that can cost you a job, uh, you know, little things like that, that you wouldn't think are important can, can be a deal breaker. So I'm really glad I went the path that I did and, and, uh, I'm glad I stuck with journalism. That's awesome. I love having these. We learn so much about each other. Ashley, can you remind everybody again? Yeah. So I am originally from Odessa, which is a smaller town about 40 minutes east of, of um, Kansas City. And I attended the University of Central Missouri in Warrensburg, where I earned a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration with an emphasis in marketing. Um, I agree with what everyone else has said that I took the marketing route, which wasn't specific to sports. I think something else in this topic that's interesting to think about is that you don't have to go to a D1 school. You don't have to go to KU or MU um, or even larger schools to uh, work in sports. And so um, I don't think, I think that when choosing a college, um, if that's the route you choose to go, that um, don't let that limitate where you choose to go or think that if you don't go to a, a big D1 school that you won't be able to um, apply and um, hopefully receive positions in the sports world. That's awesome. So um, Ashley went to Central Missouri. I went to Central Missouri. Lewis. So we're all mules and Jennies. Um, Lewis, we're going to head to you. So I know you told us a little bit about, you know, coming from Venezuela to Nebraska and then ending up at um, Central Missouri. We have a lot of questions coming in. So give us a little recap, kind of what everybody else said, and then Rachel's going to shoot you a couple questions. Uh, yes, uh, Nebraska. I was there for a couple of years, uh, played baseball there. I worked there, um, held quite a few jobs during the offs, uh, during the summer. Uh, I remember doing a lot of, um, summer school because I, I always thought that I wanted to get out of there as quick as possible and go play at Central Missouri, uh, where we had a good, really good team, uh, uh, decided to go the exercise science and kinesiology path, uh, understood early on that I fell in love with performance, the performance size, uh, side of strength training. Uh, and that led to some of the graduate work that I did with the school, uh, with the football team and the baseball team, uh, where there was a lot of uh, resources to help the athletes do, uh, do things and train, but there wasn't a lot of direction. So I liked the direction of it. Uh, and that's what I, uh, I did for a couple of years. And then uh, right after that, I was fortunate enough to get a, a job in Arizona with the Royals and I reported for my first spring training. Awesome. Well, we have a lot of questions coming in for you, Lewis. Um, the first one we have is, um, other than coming from another country, what's some hardships that you've faced in your career path? Okay, so um, so in Venezuela or growing, as, growing up as a Latin player, uh, playing baseball means you just head to the field. You go there and you catch a lot of ground balls and you practice and you do your swings and um, you know, you, it, it's more of the skill side of it. You, you're always playing the game. So once you, when, once I came over here, I fell into this, uh, I didn't know what this team was, uh, the, the concept of be, being part of a team. So I, uh, it was hard at the beginning because I was faced with the, with the schedule of going to school and then having to play baseball and then having to practice. And then you also have to do strength training and then, you have to get up early in the mornings and run and condition. And uh, I struggle at first with that, with a, with a part of it. But uh, as soon as I, I will say within the first couple of months when everything started, I started to adapt to it and, and notice that my game actually improved. 
from all these and and school was was actually fun i i love going my team being with my teammates and it was a lot about the team so i i, I really enjoy that part of it so at, at first yeah it was uh, the structure part of uh, organized baseball and organized training that, that I had a hard time with. Very cool. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so this is kind of a two-parter question for you. Um, Lewis, what questions did you ask MLB scouts? And then kind of you can answer it together is what advice can you give to a baseball player that would want to play in major league baseball? Ooh. Okay. So, um, so early on, I think, uh, the, I think everybody has evolved nowadays. So back then when I play, when I grew up, uh, like I said before, it was a lot about the skill. It was a lot about the talent. So guys could roll into the field and, and perform and do really good. Uh, nowadays, people understand, athletes understand that they have to be ready physically uh, to, to perform and having that par with their careers also helps. So there's, there's a lot more in tune players with the, the physical part now. So back then, I was always uh, very detailed uh, with the way I did things. I was, I was the guy recording the, you know, the, on the VHS tape. Some of you might not know what that is, but uh, recording, uh, you know, at bats and major league games and following the players that, I, that, that were my favorites. Uh, trying to see what they did good when they were hitting. And I, I was always very attention, you know, attention to detail with that. And I think that stuck with me throughout my career. And then after I, I in talking to scouts, I was always the guy that, you know, asked what, what should I improve on or what's the next step that I should take to. I, I was always seeking that, that input uh, from the people, from, from those uh, types of scouts or the leadership or the coaches because I I always welcome it even when it wasn't good some 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 people were brutally honest and and they always you know told me the truth and uh, I mean I was a catcher back then so people was like you you know you don't run so stop trying to be fast and worry about catching like you're spending too much time trying to be fast when you're supposed to be you know and, and I appreciated that type of input and and I carry it with me and I got better at things that they recommended and didn't work out. I wasn't talented enough to play uh, professionally, even though I was close, but I, I remember um, one of the things, the, the moments that I remember most in, in, that stuck with me was a uh, scout. There was a major league um, scout that told me, Hey, don't worry. Like you're a very hard worker and it doesn't matter. I bet that after this is all said and done, you will work in Major League Baseball. And at the time, I was, you know, I was in college and I was like, you know, I, his name is Johnny. So I remember telling him, Johnny, like, I want to play professional baseball. So just sign me because I, I sign me and don't tell me anything else. I don't I don't want to appear anything else. I just want to play professionally. And and he he told me, it's just, hey, relax, man. You, you're going to be OK and, and you're going to end up close to the field you just you know mark my words and you know fast forward a few years later I'm I'm actually really proud and and I feel really good that that worked out so that's awesome uh, and then and then the second part sorry uh so I uh what do you tell players or uh I would say uh be diverse like don't don't think baseball is the only thing that is going to get you better uh I was I always tell players like there's something wrong with going to get on a pickup basketball game. I mean, you know, like you move laterally, you accelerate, you have to do things that teach you how to move good. So how to, uh, you know, have a strong grip. Uh, that's also important when it comes to baseball. So learn, learn to move, learn to be fast, learn to be, to be agile, you know, and, and don't, don't just think baseball is the only, you know, it's the only way out. So Learn to move. That's awesome. Thank you, Lewis. I have a shout out for you real quick. Heather, and I apologize if I mess up your name, Heather Howell from 2020 Leadership. She said she worked with you as a student at the University of Central Missouri. She just wanted to say hi and tell you how excited she is that you've had a wonderful career that you've built with the Royals and that you're sharing your story with her students today. So a little shout out for you there, Lewis. No, awesome. Awesome. Mandy, real quick, somebody is asking, is there anything you miss about California or New York? 
family, pizza, bagels, <laughs> um, just the comfort of home. But uh, it's good to get out of your comfort zone sometimes and try something new. Um, so just just the basic stuff like that. I'm actually in California right now with my family. So it's a nice, as, as awful as it is not to have sports, it's a nice little break with my family. No, oh, that's awesome. Um, one question, um, and we'll finish up here real quick, was if you want to intern at the Royals, what's that process look like? So you guys can jump in and correct me if I'm wrong or if there's anything that I'm missing. Typically, most positions that we have at Kauffman Stadium will be posted on Teamwork Online. You will want to look for the trainee programs. I believe they're set up differently by um, – department. So you'll see community relations and communications, then you'll see baseball operations, then you'll see, you know, but make sure you go through all of them. Um, you want to look for the word trainee and apply on Teamwork Online is the only way for you to get your resume or application in. Most positions do require at least a bachelor's degree, um, but check it out. Some of them may not, and they'll list it on the specific um, job board for you. Um, I just want to take up oh, Serena, go for it. I just want to say our game day position started at hiring at 16. So if you are just looking for a way just to get started, get out there and just to get some uh, experience, game day position start at 16 and um, just work your way up. Also, uh, just really quickly, I want to give a shout out. I'm looking at the attendees list and I see a ton of names of, of kids that are involved with the Urban Youth Academy. Um, I actually just got a text not too long ago from Carmen and talk about getting involved and wanting to do things, do what these kids are doing because, you know, whether you, you play the game or whether you don't, you can get involved. And, and I know the Academy itself would be able to function without the help of these kids. And, um, you know, we have a young man, uh, Elijah Rush, who started with us, just came, showed up and what can I do to help? Um, he now works with us. And not only does he work with us, he is also a bat boy for the Royals. So, um, tremendous opportunities have come from just his work ethic and not just his work ethic, but everyone else that, uh, you know, is, has just shown up wanting to be a part of it. So um, get involved, get involved. Yeah, I think it's huge. Um, even having you here, you've, you've already made yourself a leg up of, of just participating in things like this. So continue to participate. We appreciate you guys more than you know. When we get back to playing baseball, we would like to invite you guys out to the stadium. So I will be in contact with your administrators or your group supervisors. And we'll have um, this panel of people that you can see on your screen right now. We'll try to get everybody together so we can meet you guys as well. Um, I'll shoot your um, advisors again an email with anybody on this board that would like to or be open to um, communication with you after the fact as well so if you guys have any further questions then you can email them directly so I'll send all that information over um, probably within the week and we just appreciate you guys so much and thank you for attending so have a great day and we'll talk to you soon bye guys